Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I just wanted to come in here to tell you that I'm deeply concerned over the breach of security in our Moscow Embassy. And while all the facts are not known, it is clear that security implications are widespread and that additional quick action is required to prevent further damage to our national security. Two weeks ago, when the severity of the situation became clear, I convened a meeting of my national security advisors and ordered Frank Carlucci to immediately begin an internal assessment of the damage. Today, I want to announce some additional actions. The United States will not occupy our new embassy building in Moscow unless and until I can be assured that it is safe to move into a secure embassy environment. Likewise, the Soviet Union will not be allowed to occupy their new facility in Washington until a simultaneous move by both countries is possible. I've instructed the Secretary of State to make embassy security a major agenda item during his upcoming talks in Moscow. And I have asked former Defense Secretary Mel Laird to chair an assessment review panel under the general authority of the Secretary of State. In addition, I've instructed the chairman of my Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, Ambassador Ar Ann Armstrong, to examine the procedures and practices used in our embassies worldwide to protect American facilities. I've requested that both reports from the Secretary of State and PIFIAB be transmitted to me within 90 days. Specifically, both the Secretary of State and PIFIAB have been tasked to evaluate the condition of our new building and ascertain whether it will ever be secure or whether it may be necessary to destroy and rebuild it. Finally, I have instructed the Secretaries of State and Defense to recommend to me the future management of security personnel at the U.S. Embassy and the USSR and elsewhere with respect to length of assignment, selection of personnel, and their supervision. And these reports will be coordinated by the National Security Council, which shall in turn make comprehensive recommendations to me on counterintelligence and security policies, procedures, and accountability. Mr. President, Mr. President, Henry Kissinger said that it is humiliating for George Shultz to go to Moscow right now, that he should be meeting instead in Helsinki, perhaps, because we should not be going under these circumstances without having secure communications. Well, I have great respect for Henry and great friendship, but I, I have to oppose him on this. I just don't think it's uh, good for us to be run out of town. Mr. President, Mr. President, how can you ask the Secretary of State to do business with the Soviets on arms control when they have apparently compromised the U.S. position in Moscow so badly? How can you deal with them under these circumstances? Well, I think the whole business of espionage uh, worldwide is something that uh, we have to recognize takes place, and counter-espionage is employed by everyone, but at the same time, uh, you don't stop doing business. Business as usual, sir? Well, business well, as usual? Well, not just a minute. As usual, we have sent uh, 81 of their agents in this country home, kicked them out of the country, and uh, they're still willing to talk arms with us. Has this changed the way you look at the Soviets? Is this, ch is this changing our relations with them? Well, I think I've been rather realistic about the Soviet Union for quite some time, and believe me, it doesn't surprise me a bit. And no, I haven't changed my view of the Soviet Union. It's a new problem, Mr. Mr. President. Has this been going on a long time, and haven't you had reports? I mean, how long have we had Soviet employees in our embassy? And we understand that you have received reports in, say, 85. And we have ordered then uh, the beginning of actions to try and find out and establish uh, if such a thing was going on. Mr. President, Mr. President, can, I follow, can I follow specifically on that? Because it was a report in 85 by your own Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board that you're calling on now for another report, and they told you that the embassy was vulnerable and specifically called on you in 85, the spring of 85, to get rid of Soviet personnel, yet you did nothing about it, and one of the members, H. Ross Perot, quit. The, this report did come in, and we immediately started and did accomplish a reduction of the personnel in stages that were there. And uh, I, I must say, we did run into some uh, 
and some embassy problems and opposition because it isn't exactly a place where you can just go out and hire Americans to go and uh, take jobs like that in the Soviet Union. But as we were continuing with that, then the Soviet Union took the first lead and ordered their people out. But Mr. President, well, if, the, if Gorbachev changes his mind, will you then allow Soviets to become re-employed at our embassy there? And how extensive is the problem in other Soviet bloc embassies? We are investigating the whole area of embassies. So listen, Frank is going to take all of your questions, unfortunately, and I'm not ducking you. I've tried to answer a few. Would you rehire them, sir, if, if Mr. Gorbachev changes his mind? No, I think we should have our own person. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Colonel Norris, Colonel Norris, Colonel Norris, Colonel Norris, Colonel Norris take orders from Mr. Casey at any time in terms of contract. I don't know. Mr. Uh, President, what about the nine contract employees, American contract employees, who were sent home within the last no. two months? Just disclosed today by the State Department. Well, I have just told you what our position is going to be about that embassy building. Mr. President, 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 we think that it's encouraging this, their whole attitude to arms, which has never before been true with any of the other previous Soviet leaders. Mr. President, Richard Allen says that in 1981, he recommended that all the Soviet nationals uh, uh, be dismissed from the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and that the State Department blocked that. Well, as I've told you, it was not an easy problem, but when the second report came in, with us here, we did start, and we did make some reductions, and we're proceeding. Was Ambassador that. Hartman responsible, sir? Was Ambassador Hartman responsible? I'm not going to. I can't determine any individual with. Thank you. Nothing. Oh. Filing. You want to take a uh, filing break? Five-minute filing break.